As the world's biggest beverage maker, the Coca-Cola company relies heavily on its steel team to find key acquisitions to fuel growth and shape its future. My name is Marie Quintero Johnson and I am Vice President of Mergers and Acquisition for the Coca-Cola Company. Well, we, uh, little known fact, probably look at approximately 130 opportunities a year, probably complete about 30 transactions a year. We have a team of approximately 15 professionals which scour the globe for these opportunities and we work in partnership with the business owners. Overall, I think that Coke has a pretty good acquisition strategy. If you look back a number of years ago, the company was much more heavily weighted towards carbonated soft drinks, especially in developed markets. Through the years, they've looked to expand the non-core portfolio, mostly through acquisitions, as well as expanding into international markets, and once again, mostly through acquisitions. The largest acquisition to date in the non-carbonated sector was the purchase of Glasso and its vitamin water brand. We had spent uh, a number of years nurturing a relationship with the Glasso team, and to me what was most exciting about the Glasso business is that that team lived the brand. Those individuals, everywhere they went, every person they met, every store they walked into, they had product with them. So this new model of identifying directly with individuals to provide them an active lifestyle beverage uh, was really exciting for the Coca-Cola company. Well, they acquired it in 2007 for $4.1 billion, and they took it from a, a largely urban setting, uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, and they really expanded it nationwide. You can really get vitamin water anywhere now that you can get a Coca-Cola Classic. You know, long term, 10, 15 years down the road, I think this is going to be a great brand for the company, that it's going to be one of their next billion dollar brands. Since Glasso, the company has focused on smaller deals with an eye toward getting in on a brand at the ground floor. One of their key strategies is expanding international markets and um, over the years and going forward, I think they've been really good at looking for small up and coming international brands. And they look for ones that are well loved with leading market shares, especially in emerging markets. A prime example of this was the 2009 investment in British natural smoothie maker Innocent Drinks. We had the opportunity to talk to Innocent uh, when the economy wasn't doing so great and Innocent was um, looking for resources to expand their own footprint. We've essentially let them run their own company. And so that's a great example of another partnership where um, over the years Coke has really learned to value the skills that other people bring to us as well. And so the challenge for the company is instead of sitting back and waiting for the next great idea to come to us, for us to be able to uncover every stone and make sure that we are talking to the biotech companies, that we are talking to the researchers, that we are talking to the inventors, that we are talking to other industries to see if there are skills and capabilities that they've used in, in their area of expertise that we can use in ours. The company is beginning to reap the fruits of its labor. Volume in North America has grown 2%, the largest gain in several quarters. But the biggest winners will be the drink innovators who get a call from Marie and her team of most admired corporate dealmakers. For more on this year's most admired corporate dealmakers, go to thedeal.com slash magazine. This is Sarah Behunick, The Deal.